Yankees. Baseball's got a generational divide. You care about Dodgers Yankees because it reminds yeah. you of 40 years ago. I don't believe that Jessica and Tony care about Dodgers Yankees. They, I don't think it means anything to them historically. Fernando Tony. Mania, come on, let's go. <laughs> Reggie Jackson in 77, game six. 70, 1977? <laughs> yeah, that's hey, right. born. You've seen the vintage video, Tony. Come on. <laughs> Dan opened it up to the group to say anything. And on the platform where most people are listening, all he got was like, huh? Like nothing. Crickets. You guys have paused. I'll could tell you why. I'll tell you yeah. what's happening here in terms of the chemistry, just generally between this segment. When you guys come on, you guys care deeply about something the young people here don't care about at all. Like at all. That's Take not it. true. Jeremy's into the baseball. Jeremy's very excited. The pitch clock, Yankees, Dodgers. Let's go, Jeremy. Take the floor. You Speak explain. No, and then explain to people why they should care about this World Series more than any of the other World Series. Because this is hearkening to a time there were three internets. It was actually, I'm sorry, three networks, and it was actually pre-internet. These were the <laughs> most important games in America when the Dodgers were playing the Yankees. Yes. First fall classic since 1956 to feature each league's home run champion. Okay, we're talking Mickey and Duke Snyder. First time ever two teams with 50 home run hitters. First time since 2012 you've got respective MVPs facing off in Judge and Otani. Of course, that was Miguel Cabrera, Buster Posey. Dan, this was the matchup that I think baseball fans dream of because back in the day it was 12 rules. This is the 12th time we're getting this, Yankees-Dodgers. The Yankees hold the edge 8-3, to three, and there are so many great memories whether it's Sandy Koufax striking out 15 in 1965 or Reggie Jackson's home run game, this is what baseball's all about. Samson, come on, back me up. Let's go. Bring up a Ron Save reference. I can't He's back at you. you up because you're using examples of people no one's heard of. You're, that's the worst okay. sales job I've okay. ever seen. Here can I go. tell you how to sell this year's okay, World Series? Two. Five of the, five of the six big three here are are MVPs, and the six might be the best hitter in baseball in Giancarlo Stanton. Otani MVP, Betts, Freeman. Judge, Stanton, and Soto. Who wants better than that? Six great players in the sport. Go ahead, David. It's a the great World why. Series, David. It's a great World Series. It is rare that in any sport you truly get the best players on the biggest stage at the end of the season who are healthy and playing. It is rare that you get the two biggest markets to play each other in any sport at the end of the season. Of course, this matters greatly, not just to the business on the field, but for the interest off the field where the ordinary fan, even if Jessica's not interested in this series, I promise you, if we get to a game six and a game seven, there will be a level of interest that even Jessica would say, oh, I actually will watch to see Otani. And she's going to shake her head, of course, and, and on character, on point, say, no, I won't. But I promise you that she will. And now just won't spite me. But the reason is that when you get deeper into a series, it raises the interest. And if you put stars in it, it makes it even better. So we have an opportunity in baseball to do something we haven't done in a really long time. And that's to get interest across all demographics, across all generations. And the hope is this is the time to do it for baseball. Is there action that night? <laughs> One of the things we run into here is that Jessica didn't want her college football interrupted by Aaron Judge's historic at-bats. There's been a divide in how it is that people get into their silos on what they like. And in that time, uh, baseball, I don't know if demographically it has lost young people because their advanced media is great, but they do have an opportunity here. If these are not 10 to 4 games, they have an opportunity with some drama and game six and a game seven to really get a lot of eyes that baseball hasn't had in a while, Adnan. Not like uh, you know, transcendent eyes. All sports fans are interested because you've got the giant famous sparkly things playing against each other. Yeah, back in the day, Dan, as you said, when there was three channels, you had 40 watching the World Series in the late 70s, early 80s. It's a different generation. Last year, Rangers D-backs drew 8 million. But this year, you're going to get double digits. Like David said, these are two of the biggest markets, New York, L.A. You're going to get hate watchers, okay? People hate the Yankees. They hate the Dodgers. Great. People hate David Sampson. They watch this segment. So, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of animus going a long way. These are popular teams. They're also loathed teams, and it's going to make for great, compelling action. Jessica, why are you making faces? What was that shot at David Sampson in the middle of that? Yeah, that was uncalled um, for. My question it, is, what if, it wasn't you hate, uncalled for. <laughs> what if you hate both teams? Who am I supposed to root for if I don't like the Yankees or you want, the Dodgers? You want colossal injuries all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez.
Like, you're, like Freddie Fre- you're like Freddie Freeman's Hobbit. Let's see how bad this thing can Colossal get. Colossal injuries. That's, that's not what we want to be doing here. Uh, Samson, uh, you don't need to actually manufacture sales on this one. You're as excited for this as a baseball series since blank. Since uh, Marlins, Yankees in 03. Only because you were involved. But just as a spectator that you're not involved in, this would be... As perfect for baseball as anything could be. That Since the Cubs in 16 yeah. and the Red Sox in 04. Because anytime you have a curse that's been broken or a big team that has not won in a long time, that generates a bunch of interest. So I would put those up there. But this one, the 2024, with Otani being in the playoffs for the first time and him having the type of year he's had with Stanton hot and Judge Judge and Soto on the Yankees, there is no scenario under which you've had a more star-studded matchup that anyone can remember in their lifetime, assuming they're under 50 years old. If Otani was going full Shohei here and actually pitching in the series mm-hmm. and hitting, then you got me. But I've seen two really good teams against each other before. But what you do have the chance of having in this series, okay, the way that Otani Tani struck out Trout in that World Baseball Classic is so many cool storylines on Soto headed to free agency. They're going to have to pay him because he's the guy I fear most somehow, even though Aaron Judge is obviously uh, a beast. And Otani has the chance to be better than like three legitimate baseball giants physically. Stanton, Judge, and I think Soto's like the best hitter plate discipline you've seen since Ted Williams. He's got a chance to slay three giants in New York and be an international hero when he does it. Well, Otani already is that, Dan, and and baseball put a lot of resources behind Otani in this postseason, a lot of money spent overseas, and it's paid off already with the interest that Japan has had in this World Series. And the Game 2 starters, another Japanese player who got $300 million, Yamamoto. And so there's just all sorts of interest across all the different countries. So you're going to see a lot of press releases coming out from New York and Major League Baseball about all of the increased interest and ratings and numbers, and there will be great spin, great positivity. Honestly, this series is, if you want to put it in another sports perspective, you take Steph's Warriors, you take LeBron's Heat or Cavs, you make them the Lakers and the Knicks, and that's what you have here for the World Series because you have those markets and those level of teams and stars and transcendent stars that define a generation here in Otani and Judge alongside multiple other MVPs and superstars. That's the comparison you can make is those two teams going head to head, but it's New York and L.A. Had okay. to bring the heat into it. OK, I think I'm in. I think I'm in. I can't. I can't that guarantee it. I can't guarantee Tony's it. Tony's in. Oh my I god! Think I'm in. Let's go. I think oh my I'm god! In. I'll watch. I did something I great. I'm in too. When I does it start? Tomorrow, right? Tomorrow. I got yeah. a thing. Yes. Oh. Wait, Saturday we got MMA uh, too. Friday night is Rutgers at USC. <laughs> oh no. Hey, Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights. It's actually after Jessica. It's a double header, I believe. No, I believe I the World the Series time. goes into the Rutgers USC game. We're back. Jess is in. Uh what is the single greatest storyline? Give me one and only one. You can only give me one storyline. Which is it? I'll give you judge, Dan, because he has not performed. Well, so far, he's hitting 161 in this postseason. It's a 704 OPS. That's league average. It's rare to say the Yankees are the underdogs, but I believe that they are. The Dodgers are favored to win this World Series, and Judge is yet to be judging. He's going to be a two time MVP. He's a rookie of the year. He's a six time All Star, but he hasn't had a signature moment aside from that home run off Class A in game three. So if the Dodgers win, they probably should win. But if Aaron Judge doesn't step up, I think Yankee fans would be pretty upset. David? The biggest storyline for me is Shohei Otani and how recently we were dealing with a big gambling scandal that got swept under the rug so quickly back when this season started in Korea. And he has a chance to end that season winning a World Series, his first time in the playoffs, first time getting postseason at-bats, and he has been a beast with runners in scoring position, hitting at a historic level, like 17 out of 21 times he's getting a hit. And if he actually gets the MVP and has the commissioner's trophy. He is the number one face of baseball in the entire world and then backs it up with performance. That does not happen every day. Both of you agree with me that Soto's the best hitter on the Yankees? Pure hitter? 
Yeah, I was about to say, St- Stanton, listen, his numbers have been great. 794 slug in nine games this postseason. Every time he's there, he's hitting it. He's got the fourth longest drop, by the way, of any position player to make the World Series. So his at-bats are must-see TV, Dan, because anytime he can go deep. But yes, pure hitter, solo in terms of getting on base, play discipline, and that power. Cliff Floyd said to me, nobody's better at hitting an elevated fastball than Soto. 95 up in the zone, and somehow Soto can take it downtown with a pitch like that. No one can do that. I loved his at bat so much. Just the fact that he seemed that the, the I, I, you're in agreement that the at bat at to end that Guardian series uh, was an all timer. When Aaron Boone's the one saying it, when he's saying an at bat for the ages, just because you kind of knew that Soto was stalking him, he was timing him the entire time. It was like watching a cat uh, play with a bird it had injured. <laughs> so that's what's that's what Soto does every at bat. Uh, he he is he's he's known for that. And in that particular at bat, Cliff Floyd's right, Uncle Cliffy, or that's not Uncle Cliffy, just Cliffy said that uh, he did take the high fastball, and that's Who's just because he hit Cliffy? the home run. Uncle Who's Cliff, Cliff Robinson. Robinson. Oh, okay. Cliff Robinson. Not, yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, good work, David. Good talking Thank to you. you. So- uh, we'll- oh. <laughs> <laughs> I only have many no, no. questions. <laughs> See you guys later. It was nice talking to you. Thanks, guys.